Okay, why don't we go ahead and get started. My name is Mike McBride and I work for the uh, Dean's Office in the Outreach and Student Recruitment area. And I'm gonna sort of monitor the um, Q&A feature. If you have any questions today for our uh, continuing students at ASU that are here to talk a little bit about what they're doing and to answer questions from their perspective, please add those questions into the Q&A feature and then we'll uh, get those answered. Uh, but I'm going to turn it over to Eric Vinnie, who works out of the School of Sustainable Engineering in the Belt Environment, and uh, I think he'll be leading the session for, for the most part. So, Eric, uh, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, like, my name is uh, Eric. I'm one of the academic advisors for the undergrad uh, programs uh, within CB, and uh, also have a title of retention specialist uh, to, to go along with my academic advising duties. Um, I guess we can do numerous stories, but let's not bore you with all of that. Uh, what we'll, I will have happen is to get our uh, students, um, our current environmental and civil students that are here to assist, I'll have them introduce themselves as well. And then we'll start off with just information about the programs and what we do here in CB. So um, Abigail, if you could start us off with introduction to you guys. My name is Abigail Har oh, sorry. <laughs> My name is Abigail Harbeck. I'm a sophomore in environmental engineering with a minor in, uh, in material science. I am from Coventry, Rhode Island at ASU. Currently, I am a learning assistant for physics. I uh, was a TA for ASU 101 for two CB professors. I'm in EPICS, which stands for Engineering Projects and Community Service. I've been on two different projects. I'm currently on a Creighton water filtration system, if any of you guys are from the Madison Highland Prep community. And I have also been a part of Society of Women and Engineers, as well as ASU Club Spike Ball. Thank you, Abigail. Jeremy, go ahead and keep going for us. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jeremy Guerrero. I am a senior studying environmental engineering and I was born and raised in Yuma, Arizona. I'm currently at the Tempe campus because that's where my major resides. Um, some student organizations that I've been involved with throughout the past couple of years have been the American Society of Civil Engineers, which I currently serve as the treasurer for, um, the Society of Water and Environmental Leaders, which I currently serve as the outreach coordinator, and SHIP and OSTEM, which are more so um, for like identities. But um, my more professional experiences include being a UGTA for a couple semesters as well as a grader. Um, and then I also participate in different research activities. Thank you, Jeremy. Alexander, go for it. Yes, I am Alex Owen. I guess technically I'm the odd one out here because I am the civil engineering major. Um, I am a junior and of course on the Tempe campus. Uh, just like Abigail and Jeremy, I've been involved in multiple things throughout my few years here. Um, kind of the odd one, again, being that would be Engineers Without Borders. Um, that's a club where we do projects in communities um, such as the Navajo Nation in Kenya, possibly even another country like Ethiopia. Um, so there's lots of fun opportunities there. Um, along with, that's partnered with EPICS, so Engineering Projects in Communities. A lot of these overlap. Um, I'm also part of Chi Epsilon, which is the Civil Engineering Honor Society. Um, so there's, there, there's quite a bit that we're all involved in, but in some way, we definitely um, make our mark on the campus here. All right, thank you guys. And you know, for all of our you know, attendees, all so you guys that are admitted and, and trying to make the decision, it's about being involved. And as you can tell, you know, the, the more things that you know, these three are doing, you know, the more connected they feel to ASU, the more connected they feel to their major and then their potential career paths as well. So uh, what we're going to do here is you know, just kind of inform you a little bit more about the program, uh, about our school, um, you know, obviously the School of Sustainable Engineering in the Built Environment. Just include some information about what we feel are uh, some important pieces uh, for you guys to know. Um, obviously, the this is going to be fun <laughs> it keeps messing up. So the majors that we have are civil and uh, there's a concentration of sustainable, civil sustainable engineering involved as well. So we'll talk a little bit about the, some of those differences. 
Uh, environmental engineering is one of our majors as well. And then we can go into the other side you know, of the industry and get into construction management, construction engineering. Uh, so we'll kind of talk a little bit about each of these. Uh, the first one being civil engineering is the program that has the most students in, in our school currently. Uh, obviously, it, it's going to cover a lot of things, a lot of different areas of what we would call disciplines uh, inside of infrastructure you know, of, of communities and things of that nature. So the different disciplines, um, you know, that, that come up, um, you know, will include things like you know, environmental, you know, geotech, um, you know, but obviously, as we I'll come back, but what we've talked about are you know, what are the big projects civil engineers do big projects, um, you know, things that are multi-million, you know, billion dollar projects. And, and that's where you know, it's kind of a one of a kind you know, type of project is what, you know, the big thing that civil engineers do. Um, from there, what we do have are these disciplines and what we talk about geotechnical or geo-environmental, you know, disciplines. Uh, you know, what that would be is more soil mechanics and you can find things like earthquake engineering in, inside of those areas. Um, hydro systems, where you're talking about hydrology, water resources, and the remediation uh, of that. Uh, structural and materials, uh, where we start thinking about the analysis and design, you know, basically through computer methods. Uh, some of the materials that are involved in, in that would be steel, concrete, uh, you know, timber, even masonry uh, are, are big things that, that you would find in, inside of the structural materials pathway. Uh, transportation, uh, that also has about, you know, kind of two different pathways you can think about. One being systems planning, where you think about the operations, the behaviors that happen with, with transportation, as well as the technologies uh, that come around. And then the other side of that would be pavement and, and other materials that they have uh, on the transportation side. You know, the performance uh, of those materials, the testing of those materials, how do we develop them uh, and make them more, more sustainable. Um, sustainable in, of, in and of itself. I'll actually use uh, the next slide to go a little bit more in depth into that. Uh, and then environmental, where we think about air and water pollution. Um, and obviously we have a specific degree path for that. Uh, that that's really bringing you know, a lot of new students into our, into our school. So we're pretty excited about that. Right. The sustainable uh, engineering concept or civil with the sustainable engineering concentration um, that it's basically just a, a degree that's about, let's see if I can get this to work now, <laughs> in system modeling and life cycle approaches. Um, you know, what we're really trying to do is uh, get that improvement uh, of the human condition. And, you know, it, so it does bring, you know, a lot of the same disciplines from just a general civil engineering um, degree. Uh, what we'll try to do is, you know, get a little bit more of the analysis of emerging technologies, um, you know, that kind of get into, um, you know, more assessment in the risk of, of what those materials and, and the life cycles will, will be about. Our environmental engineering degree, uh, relatively new, started about three years ago. Um, we're in the process of getting uh, the full ABET accreditation, which we're assuming will happen some point in time this summer. Um, we just had the, the main visit uh, by that accreditation service, um, I think it was a few months ago. And so it, from all the things that we know, it went very well. And so we're uh, really excited to get that to full ABET accreditation pretty soon. Uh, but obviously what we're, they're focusing on, um, you know, a lot of you know, urban type things, as I mentioned before, air and water uh, types of pollutions and, and quality, you know, air and water quality systems is what we're really focusing on with the environmental engineering program. Looks like I just mentioned all of that. Um, so if I could have Abigail and Jeremy or Jeremy talk a little bit about maybe some of the things with these focuses on the screen now, um, where have you either experienced some of this um, or have learned some of this? You know, how, how has this been put into play? Yeah, um, so I will say there are a few courses that touch on air quality, um, I believe two or three, but you won't really get exposed to that until your upper division coursework. 
Um, but the main content for your sophomore and junior year classes will be revolved around um, water and wastewater treatment. So you will get a lot of experience in those. And then outside of coursework, you can get a lot of that experience through research. Um, the faculty are always open to bringing in underclassmen like as soon as your freshman year. Um, like right now I'm doing work on E. coli. It's kind of like interdisciplinary work. It's environmental engineering and biomedical engineering. Um, but yeah, you can get a lot of exposure through that and through student organizations uh, outside of your coursework as well. Yeah, going off uh, what Jeremy said, uh, I would say last, uh, my sophomore year has been uh, related mostly towards hazardous waste materials, as well as a lot about wastewater filtration systems, like in EVE 261, Jeremy was actually my UGTA for that. And we've just been doing uh, more building off of water quality through other components as well as we progress through the next semester and then even further for next year for my junior year. Abigail, could you describe what a UGTA is? A UGTA is undergraduate teaching assistant, and they kind of partner alongside the professor and kind of are like the liaison between the students and the professor as far as uh, communicating certain things that the professor may not be able to go as in depth with due to their mass class sizes and all the classes that they do have. So they handle um, a lot of the smaller stuff that a professor wouldn't be able to spend as much time on and they host office hours. They're always answering emails and answering a lot of student questions. Thank you. Yeah, and we try to get UGTAs into uh, pretty much every class is the is the goal. Uh, so we, we know there's a lot going on inside of those courses. Um, that additional help is is always needed. Uh, Alex, I um, I meant to get you involved in the civil engineering side of some of the disciplines and, and things of that nature. Uh, tell us some of your experiences uh, that you've had with regards to you know the discipline that, that you're in right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, first showing up at ASU, I was actually overwhelmed by the amount of options that I had. Um, but the further I got into it and the more um, classes I took through, through my sophomore year and especially FSC 100 my freshman year, um, it's a class we get to do projects, uh, literally your first semester. So you won't have to wait three years to begin engineering. I'm um, learning about it. You'll actually begin right away. Um, I started to realize what I like more. I mean, as I got into those sophomore classes, it became very, very apparent to me uh, that I liked all of it. <laughs> um, so it definitely was it, the amount of options that you have to choose. Um, I'm, I'm able to take a class in basically every single discipline. Um, and then from there, so I've taken a geotech class, taken environmental, engineering, structural engineering. Um, and from there, you can expand upon it. And I'm kind of choosing to focus in three areas, basically, um, and then choose one of those ultimately after um, school to kind of go into more. Um, so I love structural engineering. Um, geotechnical engineering is very interesting to me. And I also seem to like hydro systems. So they're not really um, overlapping in that sense. But because of that, I'm able to open up a lot of opportunity outside of um, just one field. So it just depends on what you like. And the more you do, um, the more interesting it becomes. And yes, the class I mentioned was FSC 100. Um, so that's every, all engineering freshmen take it. If you're a BME, I think it's called BME 100. That's the only difference there. Um, and that's where you'll have a professor who teaches real courses um, later on. And they'll kind of introduce you to everything. I believe there's a grad TA and UGTAs in most of those courses. Um, I built a bridge um, out of like wood sticks and tested it. Um, did a water filter. Um, Abigail, Jeremy, did you guys also do that or did you have different projects? I had uh, in my FSC 101, I had uh, 100, sorry, well, uh, 101 is epics, but um, I built, we did a multitude of projects, but I guess our main focus one was towards the end where we actually had to build a windmill out of just supplies in the classroom and materials out of there. And then we had to generate the power and look, uh, look at maximizing efficiency for power usage and stuff like that. Really cool. <laughs> I did a... Um... Uh, hydro power generator. So that was, a, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as you, as uh, all of you, you know, incoming potential freshmen see, there's a lot to happen uh, inside of the first semester, you know, a 
lot of experiences that that'll get you hopefully hooked, you know, in, into knowing that you made the right decision for, for what, what you want to do. All right, so on to our next couple of programs. We've got construction management and technology. And so this is a, a degree that uh, you know, what we would say is a, kind of like a, a human nature type of, type of program. Combines a lot of business uh, along with you know, the construction side of things. So that people oriented type of um, program. And so what we're doing or the construction management group, what they're learning um, are some technical side of things when you start thinking about uh, some of the statics, uh, some of the testing and material stuff that happens, but a lot of things that are about creating the projects that engineers normally put together. You know, so blueprint reading, contracts, you know, different pro problem solving skills are what the construction management degree is going to get into. So uh, we, we feel that it's a great match to have the, the civil engineering side matched with that construction management side, because normally it's a you know, design uh, aspect, problem solving and design aspect on the, on the civil um, course of it or side of it. And then you've got the construction management that's actually putting all of the people and the resources together to create that project. And so that's where we're, you know, we really enjoy that uh, kind of combination of things. And the plan in the future is to find a way to get like the, the culminating final course for all of the degrees. So civil uh, environmental engineering, construction management, and construction engineering, to have one final class where all of them come together for these big, you know, like the big final project of um, you know, where it's kind of like the, the capstone course. Uh, so we're trying to figure out you know, how we're going to be able to do that, but there is a big conversation about attempting to get that to happen. So we're pretty excited about that. Right. The combination, um, you know, or you know, of, of that, uh, but basically what a lot of construction management technology students are getting there. We don't really have specialty areas in that, but what we're trying to get them to experience are commercial buildings, residential building type, uh, type of courses. Um, the heavy construction stuff, when you think about roads and bridges, um, a, a lot of the you know, things that come down with concrete. Uh, we've got a really solid uh, concrete industry student organization uh, that's been really solid for our group as well. And the degree that kind of could combine all of that is our construction engineering degree. Uh, it's in a way kind of a split, you know, 50-50 of civil engineering uh, along with construction management. So the first part, uh, let's say the first, you know, three to four semesters of the construction engineering degree put a little bit more emphasis on the civil side, uh, sprinkle in a couple construction management courses uh, here and there, and then we'll progress a little bit more into more upper level uh, construction management courses like planning and scheduling and the contracts course and some of the project management courses that that happen. Right. Uh, and what we've got here, um, again, is just focusing in uh, on a lot of that management. Uh, so again, everything that's civil engineering, environmental engineering, construction management, construction engineering, a lot of the things that they're attempting to do are these massive projects, these big one-time projects of, you know, whether we talk about railroads or buildings or, you know, dams, um, you know, reservoirs, anything. I mean, that's normally these, these huge projects um, that, that you get to work on and, and you know, that are all about infrastructure, about making sure that your, your community or the society is, is ready to go. Eric, could I actually just jump in really quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so with construction engineering, construction management, I actually know quite a few uh, other students who are in the same classes as me who've actually done internships um, as a construction engineer or as a construction management um, type of position. So there's definitely some overlap with civil with those. And I know a lot of people who finished a civil degree and then decided that they love uh, managing projects and they've actually jumped straight into construction management. Um, so there's definitely overlap between the two. So if you're really stuck between them, um, don't worry. I mean, they're not worlds apart. They're, they're pretty similar in, in some ways. Um, I've, I got to do sort of construction engineering last summer. Um, and my civil degree helped me in some ways. And then in some ways, uh, I learned more about the business side of things. So definitely some good overlap. Thanks, Absolutely. Sorry. Thank you, Alex. That actually was a great segue into what this slide is, is really about. And having everyone know that internship opportunities are abundant inside of this school. 
Uh, we have very specific internship and career fairs uh, that we host inside of our building. Uh, and we do you know, two to three days in the fall and we do two to three days in the spring semester. And so it is a significant uh, advantage that we feel um, you know, our partnerships with industry have created for all of our students. Uh, we do have mandatory internships inside of the construction management, the construction engineering, and the environmental engineering degrees. So those are part of the, the degree program where they have to complete um, one, if not two. Uh, the civil engineering degree does not have a mandatory one, but it is kind of rare that we that the students don't do one. Uh, is, is pretty much what it's come down to. I think it's it's been built up so much um, inside of our community, our, our school of CB, that internships are so important, um, and that there's so of much there's so many available to our students um, that it just it becomes a natural thing to look for. Okay. Um, other things, uh, oh, all of the courses uh, that you're going to be taking inside of civil engineering and environmental engineering are leading towards the fundamentals of engineering exam. And so we've got a little note down there, uh, which is normally an exam that you would take inside of your final semester um, as a senior. And it's just helping you, you know, kind of really kick off that, that planning for your career. And that's what the, the FE exam is really about. And that leads into, you know, future opportunities uh, for what would be the PE exam, so the professionals uh, of engineering exam. Uh, so those are you know things that we consistently you know talk about as well as you know, what is this going to do? What is this course? What is this experience going to do for your preparation uh, in regards to your career path? Uh, construction management um, also has um, you know construction management also has a, a um, kind of a certification exam at the end as well uh, that we kind of help them prepare for as well. Right. Inside of the question answer, is the FEA exam a one-time exam, no redos? Uh, no, it is actually something you can retake. Um, you know, so we've had numerous students that have, that have retaken it, um, but you have to, to get the, where we're talking about the costs can be covered by our, our we've got a student group, or not a student, but a, actually it's our Friends of Engineering, um, you know, group actually a bunch of professionals and a lot of industry partners. They help cover the cost of um, our students' exams, uh, basically by <laughs> basically if you pass it during you know before you graduate, they'll cover the costs, and then you just bring bring in your passing form, and you know you actually put some money in your account, basically <laughs> at that point. So not a bad deal. All right, things. Things that you have opportunities of inside uh, of CB um, while being a student here as well come down to us, uh, you know, some of the student organizations uh, that, you know, Abby and Jeremy and, and Alex have talked about. Uh, some of the other things we, we mentioned a lot are Fury. So there's research initiatives that come up. Uh, and then I mentioned a little bit of FOCI, which is a Friends of Civil Engineering group of industry partners. So a lot of, you know, professionals in the industry. We try to get you know mixers or little get-togethers uh, so we can give opportunities for networking uh, you know, for our students with with industry professionals. Um, since we're on the topic of like some student organizations, uh, I know the three of you, Abby and Jeremy and Alex, you guys have mentioned some of the student orgs that you are involved in. Um, is there anything additional that you would like to add you know, to some of these student orgs? I can add one if there's a, I mean, if this is really a picture of it, I'm not sure, but those folks uh, in that canoe and the, mm -hmm. is that the concrete canoe? That is, that is one of the concrete canoes that it was, that was created. Yeah. Inside of, uh, you know, for the competitions that, that happened. I feel like uh, there's definitely overlap between these, um, especially with like epics. Cause I know projects from my club, engineers of orders, they've been transferred into epics now and they're in both. Um, so there's definitely a lot of project opportunities for you to experience along with research. Um, I started research. It's super simple to start. You email a professor, talk to a professor. Hey, I really enjoyed your class. I went to like the research payer fury page. I saw your research. Um, do you, are you looking for any undergrad students? And that's sometimes all it takes, um, is in that a proposal, of course, but definitely a lot of opportunity, um, that I feel like. Uh, you would be, you'd be missing out if you didn't at least do one of these things. 
in, in my opinion. I think there's so many great things ASU offers. Um, maybe in my mind, it's, it's almost silly not to do it. Like there, a lot of them are a lot of fun. Um, concrete canoe, a lot of fun. Spend some time with people and you literally, you learn um, by applying what you've also learned in class. So really, really recommend this. Yeah, and to add to that, um, Concrete Canoe is just a single project within the American Society of Civil Engineers. And within that organization, we actually do attend regional conferences. Um, we compete against all, not all, but like 18 other schools in California. Um, and there's different competitions. There's environmental, surveying, um, transportation. So multiple focuses within civil and environmental engineering. So I highly recommend um, that regardless of whatever major you are within CB, just please join American Society of Civil Engineers. Not only is it great to apply all of the knowledge that you're learning within your coursework, but it is also a great opportunity for networking, just because we also have younger member forums that we um, talk to industry professionals. And it's just a great way to even like land an internship or just have um, a mentor throughout your college experience. So uh, Alex brought up uh, EPICS and I, I think that is my favorite thing that I am a part of at ASU because it's kind of like research but without the full commitment because research can be very, very scary and very intimidating when you first go into it. Whereas EPICS, it's extremely laid back compared to research as you're kind of left alone with like your general idea and you just meet with uh, a, a couple of people from the industry weekly to go over your ideas to see where you're going with it. And actually my project, we have applied for so many grants that this semester we have about $5,000 to spend towards our project. And we've been ordering all of our supplies and just, uh, it's only my first semester on it, but it's been a five semester project. But just seeing all of that, like each day, it's similar to research in terms of it's small tasks day to day that add up to something, but it's a little more relaxed and it's a little more hands on. Whereas if you just go in as an undergraduate research assistant, uh, you're not as involved, I feel like, as you are in epics. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it again, involvement <laughs> is one of the key key terms for, for today. And, you know, we, we really want to make sure that there's always an opportunity uh, for learning and an opportunity for uh, gaining experience. Uh, when it comes time for you know, anything that we talk about career-wise, normally the first couple of questions, out of the first couple of questions any employer is going to ask, it's not going to be about, hey, what what course did you learn or what did you learn in this particular course? It's going to be about what did you experience and how has that benefited you? And so it's about what are those things to do? All right. Uh, our building, College Avenue Commons, uh, is where, you know, my office is housed in the advising department. A majority of our construction uh, professors, as well as a good portion of our civil engineering professors and the leadership uh, involved with the school, is housed in the College Avenue Commons. We're kind of on the north side of campus, uh, you know, relatively close to the football stadium. And uh, best part is that we are across the street from Snooze and Postinos, which are fabulous restaurants. If you want a really good breakfast, Snooze is the place for you. If you want uh, some bruschetta, Postinos is a heck of a place to start. <laughs> so we're pretty fortunate to have a good location uh, on, on kind of on the north side of campus. Uh, but we, we really enjoy where we're at. Uh, the building uh, that we're in, built in 2014, uh, has been awarded consistently a, as a, a gold, uh, gold certification in LEED. And uh, just something that we're always proud of that we can continue to you know, put forth you know, high quality uh, you know, in, into the environmental aspect of things. Uh, other components, like I mentioned, uh, it does house a lot of our um, you know, faculty members. Uh, it does have quite a few classrooms. We take up uh, definitely the fourth and fifth floor of College Avenue Commons. Uh, the third floor does have a um, little bit of, of classroom space that is used by the computer science uh, department, uh, but we also have other meetings and classrooms that, that are used down there. The second floor uh, and the first floor is where you'll find you know places like the Sun Devil Marketplace. Uh, there's a welcome center, kind of a there's a grab-and-go store, you know, a little, little convenience store for everybody. 
And um, so that's where the first and second floor is. Uh, the you know, a really nice uh, kind of, you know, I guess they still call it bookstore in a way, but it's, it's more like a merchandise store for ASU, you know, swag um, is on that first floor as well. So you know, it's a it's a great building. You know, we're we're extremely proud of it, and you know something that we we continue to you know want to tout as a as a positive for for our school. Well, everything else, uh, if you want to reach out to us, um, you know we can always you get you always get in touch with us at cb.advising at asu.edu as a primary email. And then we've always have the ability if you want to get in touch with just the, the general aspect of, of Fulton schools, you know, if you want to bug Mr. McBride a little bit, you can always reach out to him as well <laughs> at the Fulton schools uh, email. Uh, but we appreciate you guys um, you know, joining us and obviously want to open up a ton of opportunities for questions for that. A um, couple of couple of questions. Uh, have, I'm not sure if these have been answered or not. I'll be a master student in CMT program. I want to ask about how the construction club, like CMAA and Design Build, helps students acquire industry related knowledge. Is the uh, does the ASU have a co op program in construction management? So on and so forth. Okay. So the yeah the CMA the Design Build you kind of student orgs. Um, you know, actually almost all of the organizations do have an affiliation with industry partners. And so that is where that, that acknowledgement comes from. That is where the connection will come into play. Um, do we have specific co-ops? No, uh, but we have partnerships where we know specific companies are going to want to come in, you know, to our uh, career fairs, our internship fairs, and want to talk to ASU students. Uh, a lot of companies will send us, you know, available jobs, you know, whether full-time jobs or internships. So um, even though I'm not the internship coordinator or the outreach director, we have someone specific for that inside of CB. Um, I'm not that person, but I still receive numerous contacts from companies saying, hey, we have this position open. Um, you know, who can, you, how can we help find somebody to fill it? And so, you know, it's, it's, you know, constantly trying to you know, get people connected to those companies. And so we've got someone specific that that will help with that. No matter if you're undergraduate or a graduate you know, level student, there are connections all over the place. And at, at ASU, I don't think we've been without a crane on campus for the last uh, 15, 20 years. So I, I like, for example, you know, uh, a lot of you incoming freshmen would live, live at a place called Tooker House. And we had, I think, construction engineers and construction uh, management students um, environmental students maybe that were working in that facility as interns and so some of that could actually happen very close to your your classroom with some great construction uh, entities uh, that, that, that work on this stuff. We're very lucky in Phoenix to have as many construction uh, industry partners as we have. Yeah it, it is. I, I have numerous um, students civil and construction uh, that or, I mean, they're, they're working on the the new kind of hockey arena, the hockey, gymnastics, all that arena that, that's going to be going up. Numerous uh, that are talking uh, to me about what their responsibilities are with that, with their internships that they're, they're currently doing. Uh, one guy was talking about, you know, he's like, yeah, we're, we're putting the caissons in the ground, you know, starting next week. So, you know, it's it's a real deal. <laughs> we can't go back from that. That's for sure. So it, it's it's something where it's about that experience, like I, I talked before. All right, so Sophia looks like she has a question for the students. Um, so what would you say was your favorite research opportunity? So that's posted to Alex, Jeremy, and Abigail. What's been your favorite research uh, opportunity? I guess I'll go first. Um, so like Eric was saying, um, a requirement within the environmental engineering degree program is to have an internship. Um, and for that, they actually counted one of my research experiences from over the summer for that. Um, so it was a program called, uh, well, it was through the NSF, the National Science Foundation. It was an REU, which is a research experience for undergraduates. And it's basically an, um, an opportunity to visit another institution over the summer. So I was fortunate to go to the University of California, Berkeley so I basically spent my entire summer in San Francisco. I was studying direct potable reuse, which I am a big fan of. 
It's basically recycling wastewater to drinkable purposes. Um, but yeah, that was definitely my favorite research opportunity, not only for like how, like the high quality of the lab and everything, but mainly just because I got to explore a new place. Um, but that's not to say that the research at ASU is not great. I've also been having a great experience this semester in my lab. It's unfortunate that a lot of my work has gone to a virtual setting, but I'm still making the best out of it. Um, and my PI is still as helpful as ever. Thank you. Yeah, so I actually just started research here at ASU um, with the CBBG Foundation, which is the Center for Biomediated Geotechnics. So it's kind of combining um, biology and geotech. Yeah, that's it's it's a tough one. CBBG. It's it's definitely a, a tongue twister. Say it five times fast. Um, but I've been working with EICP, um, which is enzyme-induced carbonate precipitation in soils. So what that's looking at is how um, we can use an enzyme to create calcium um, in essentially soil columns to kind of harden them um, to a state that's uh, usable, whether that's in um, limiting the amount of dust that blows away on construction sites. So instead of spraying down dust with water every single day, you would spray some sort of EICP milk solution on it, keeping down the dust. Um, or we've looked at um, bridge supports in the water. Um, and there are certain trees um, I believe they're called mangrove trees where they have root systems that protect the soil they're on from water erosion. Um, looking at creating a, a, a computer model that would simulate some sort of mangrove tree uh, root system around a bridge foundation to prevent that from being eroded. Um, so there's lots of different things within the CDBG organization that I've started to get um, exposed to. And I have to say, the more that I get into it, the more interesting it becomes and the more useful I've become. So like Abigail said, it can be intimidating at first, uh, but the most important thing I've found is to ask questions and just have a good attitude and show up. Um, I've really enjoyed what I've done so far. So I am new to research. I am only a sophomore. So I'm actually trying to get into research this summer with Professor Trevor Boyer. He is doing a brand new research opportunity about lithium carbonate species in uh, current drinking water fountains around campus. And we're basically the idea is that the EPA is just now starting to look at the alkaline metal uh, lithium and its concentrations in water because that was never a really focused metal that we watched in our drinking water, but he's just looking around the campus. It's, it's extremely new and in the early stages, but I'm hoping to get on it, but it would be measuring the concentration and seeing if how toxic it actually is to, to us and what percentage we can handle and how it is affecting us in our overall bodies. And I, a lot of the research that I've just been doing now is just getting exposed to it by reading through past papers and on similar topics and getting a, an idea of the overall structure of the research. Yeah, and I just, I just plugged something into the uh, chat. It's a, it's a link to our uh, FURY program, which is Fulton Undergraduate Research Initiatives. And this is a great, great way for you to get connected to research um, and incredibly early in your, in your career, as early as some, some students have done it as early as the second semester of their freshman year after they've established a GPA. But the nice thing about this program is that um, uh, we're, in, we're incentivizing the whole situation. So we're actually um, paying professors uh, to take undergraduate students into their research. Uh, and then at the same time, providing um, some skin in the game for the students too. So you'd receive a stipend uh, along the way to participate in that research. So I'd look closely at that website. If you are interested in research, you, you can imagine what kind of difference that can make on your resume in terms of things you, you've done outside of the classroom. Um, and it also uh, tells your future industry partners that, that you've uh, been willing to work in group situations and and had some teamwork uh, opportunities, which is really important in all of engineering and, and, and technology. So, and there is a symposium too coming up um, on the 16th. I think that's virtual if any of you students are involved. Um, so you could actually probably join as prospective students and, and check out all the projects. It looks like there are well over a hundred 
projects that will be uh, on display. Uh, and these are students that will get up and explain to you what the research was and uh, how they did it. And um, it's, it's a really cool event and it happens both in the fall and the spring. It's really exciting to see all the different projects and sometimes you still you can't even think of you know, how that even became a, a part of research like i can't even say half of the words on that board but it makes sense after they explain, <laughs> they explain it to me uh, so there's always some really exciting things going on with that um but we continue we'll continue to keep uh you know if anyone else has questions about anything regarding uh, our majors uh, or specific questions for the students uh, you know, the opportunity is there Feel free to, to write them into the chat or write them into the Q&A section at, at this point in time. Um, Mike, do you think there's anything else yeah, that we can cover? I don't, uh, I don't think so. I, I mean, if, you, if, if nobody has any other questions, we really appreciate everybody coming um, uh, to join us and, and and listen, we'll also just just for your um, information, if you're, you've attended the general sessions, you've run into one of us in, in these presentations and eventually all these uh, webinars will be up and running in our outreach and student recruitment um, uh, web pages. So you can go back to them and review the information or if you have friends and family that you wanna share the information with, they can just click on a link and it's like a YouTube video that that we just produced so um so you can always get this this information but very much appreciate alex and jeremy and abigail your participation and uh and then for all of you um you know it's been it's been a, a little different year for us uh with these uh with with our nsync uh, model and, and virtual uh sort of teaching in a lot of different ways but we are planning to go back to uh, learning mode one in the fall if you haven't heard that already uh, and if you want more information about that, go to our COVID website. So if you just go to our ASU.edu, um, uh, type in COVID in the search engine, you get a message from our provost and that's updated every week where learning mode one is, we're gonna go back to full immersion where everybody's on campus taking classes like we, like we all enjoyed before this all started. And, uh, and, and so we look forward to seeing you in the fall and, and, and uh, have a great uh, rest of the week. Check your admitted student sessions if there's any other opportunities you want to you want to see. Um, uh, just just check out what's what's offered on the on the links you're getting from admissions. So thank you all very much. I appreciate your time, guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm.